This morning we light the uh, angel's candle as a reminder to us of God's holy messengers, those that were sent to share the good news of the coming of the Christ child. I've entitled this morning's message, Advent Prophecy Fulfilled, Part 4. Okay. You see the pattern here, right? Uh, this coming Friday at 6 o'clock here at the church, we will be gathering together to share the Christmas story, to light the Christ candle, to share in communion. And it's uh, we have open communion here at the church at New Creation, so if you want to join us, please feel free to do so. All we ask is that you be a believer in Jesus Christ, love the Lord. That's what it's all about. It's not membership into the church, it's membership into the kingdom. Isn't it? Amen. And that's what we're celebrating membership into the kingdom and uh, the promise that was given and as I've done so far throughout uh, these past few weeks I want to go back to the Old Testament and you know it's really hard to find uh, some something that just like speaks angels in the Old Testament okay? so uh, but I did some research and some looking and I, I, I know what, what um, you know what's the Lord's God, uh, I believe, for this week, and I, I'm going to share uh, from Isaiah chapter 7 and also from Matthew chapter 1, uh, the message that the Lord has for us. Isaiah chapter 7, beginning of verse 10, reads like this. Then the Lord spoke again to Ahaz, saying, Ask a sign for yourself of the Lord your God. Make it deep as Sheol or high as heaven. But Ahaz said, I will not ask, nor will I test the Lord. Then he said, listen now, O house of David, is it too slight a thing for you to try the patience of men that you will try the patience of my God as well? Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, a virgin will be with child and bear a son, and she will call his name Emmanuel. He will eat curds and honey at the time he knows uh, enough to refuse evil and choose good. For before the boy will know enough to refuse evil and choose good, the land whose two kings you dread will be forsaken. Now that is an Old Testament prophecy from Isaiah that will be fulfilled in the book of Isaiah. However, as we I pointed out before, and we um, kind of looked at and alluded to even here, prophecies sometimes have a second fulfillment in the scriptures. And that comes in Matthew chapter 1, where Matthew writes... Beginning at verse 22, now all this took place to fulfill what was spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Behold, the virgin will be with child and shall bear a son. They shall call his name Emmanuel, which translated means God with us. And this is what we're celebrating. This week we, we light the, the, the angel candle to remind ourselves of God's holy messengers, those that he anointed to share the coming of his son, not just the angels from heaven, but the prophets, Isaiah, others like even Matthew who shares this event, and even us. We are, have been anointed by God to share the message. We are God's holy messengers as well. But Isaiah shares this past, uh, this, this prophecy with, a, with Ahaz, kind of pointing to it. We do see in the, in the Gospels, that the prophetic message of the angels came to individuals like Zechariah, Mary, the shepherds. They all received a, a, this, this message from God talking about the fulfillment of a promise, fulfillment of the coming of his son. We see the message interpreted as that which precedes the angels that's handed down from the prophets. So with the Matthew passage, what we see here is that while Matthew shares this, and we'll look at Luke on Friday night, we'll look at the, the, the Christmas story, we see that the, the gospel writers, they share this, but it is the fulfillment of something that has come before. And one thing that I, I think is important for us to really hold on to is the fact that God did not send his son as an afterthought. And if anything over the past few weeks, this is, that these passages from the, the prophets have shown us, is this was God's plan all along. His plan was to send his son for us. And the prophets continue to kind of point that direction. Yes, we have 
We have a prophecy on Bethlehem. We have a prophecy on the shepherds. We have a prophecy on the angels. We have, you know, we have all of these prophetic messages that are, 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 are kind of wrapped up and we see them in the Gospels and we spend our time in the Gospels this time of year. But I just felt the Lord wanted us to realize here that, you know what, this has been my plan even from the beginning. This was his intent. This was his purpose, even from the beginning of creation. He was not caught off guard. He's never caught off guard, and he knows what he has planned. And while we look at this and we see this, the fulfillment of these prophecies here, let's not forget there are prophecies yet to come that he will be faithful to fulfill on our behalf. So we do see this here in Isaiah's prophecy. The prophet speaks of a promised sign that will be given. This child, this, this, this young child, this infant born of a virgin, born of a young girl, who will be referred to as Emmanuel. And I want to kind of take a break down this, this passage from Isaiah today and look at a few things that I think are important for us. Things that I think that we can see and realize here. God, when God has a plan, I truly believe that even if we don't want to be a part of it, God still has a plan. And it's really better for us. I think it's great for us if we can just grab hold of what God is doing and become a part of what he wants to accomplish in us, through us, and in the world. So let's take a look at these three things here. The first of these is that God calls all to ask. Now what I mean by this is notice in verses 10 and 11 that the Lord speaks to Ahaz through the prophet and said, ask, ask me. Boy, wouldn't it be just great if, you know, we just heard a voice from God and he just said, ask me and I'll give it to you. Well, he really has in the scriptures. But I mean, here's this idea of the prophet coming up and saying, ask a sign for yourself from the Lord. And how, what kind of a sign? It doesn't matter. It could be as deep as Sheol or as high as heaven. You ask it and God is here to answer your request. And I just think that the, as we see that the Lord speaks to the king through the prophet and he challenges him to ask of God. Now, Ahaz, we'll talk about his excuse here in a minute, which is really kind of not, it's kind of a flimsy excuse, really. And yet at the same time, maybe not. Uh, I don't know. We'll take a look and see. But the idea here is, is that we, we serve a God. And I think this is true with Jesus Christ as well, as, as he is our Savior, that whatever we ask, he is there to receive our petition, to receive our request. And you say, well, how do you know that? Well, first of all, when I ask him to forgive me of my sins, I can't think of anything in my life that would go deeper than Sheol or higher than heaven than the forgiveness of my sins. And he said, ask, and I'll give it to you. Now, while that's true, and we as believers sit here and say, yes, I can accept that, God says, ask other things as well. You see, the Lord speaks to humanity through his son, Jesus Christ. When we celebrate uh, this, uh, you know, the, the Christmas season, when we celebrate this time together, what we see here is that God is, you know, he is uh, here for us, and we celebrate the coming because why he wants to fulfill something. You see, Jesus Christ came to reveal to us the truth of God's promises, that God has promises for us, that he's made for us, that he, is, he has called us to, uh, or he is here for us, that we would be able to, to, to experience the fulfillment of all of this. The idea here for us of what, what he has done on our behalf, and, and and so we, we realize here that we need to realize here that Jesus Christ came for a purpose. The prophets say this, you know, and God says, you ask it and, and I'll give you the sign. And, and of course, as the king rejects God's petition, so there are those today who would reject God's promise of Jesus Christ. You know, people, you know, I've heard people say, you know, if God could just give me a sign, then I could believe. I can't think of any greater sign than Jesus Christ himself. I can't think of any, you know, it's like, well, if he could just get me out of debt, if he could just, you know, do this for me, if he could just, you know, do that for me, then I could believe. What I have come to find out is there, I've seen instances in people's lives where God has intervened in their life and they've still chosen to reject him. 
Because there's only one sign that makes a difference. And that sign is Jesus Christ. But it's up to each and every one of us to choose to accept or reject God's asking. And this is what he's asking us this year, I think, that, that for each and every one of us. For those of us that are believers, that's wonderful, we've responded, but there's more he wants to do. For those of you that don't know Jesus Christ, the, the petition's going forth. And God says, today I want you to ask. Ask, and I will respond. I will give you. You see, the Holy Spirit is the one who, through whom this promise is made known. We, we, we talked about the Holy Spirit and some things in Sunday school this morning, but, but the idea here is, is the Holy Spirit, as I shared before, is the one who draws us to Jesus Christ. The inwardly of the Spirit draws us to Christ that we can come before him and realize that what we ask, he will do. And yet it is upon each and every one of us as individuals to be willing to ask. Ahaz wasn't willing to ask. Are you? Because this morning God is saying to you, ask. Now, the second point here is that some refuse, don't they? Verses 12 and 13, we see that Ahaz says, I will not put the Lord to the test, okay? Uh, then he said, is, then the Lord says it's a too slight a thing. But the, Ahaz says, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to put the Lord to the test. That's not what I do. No, you know, you're, you're trying to get me boxed in a corner here, Isaiah. Maybe he's thinking that. That's how I'm thinking. He's thinking that. But the idea here is I'm not going to do that. And we, you know, it's interesting because as Christians, we use, you know, we see in the scriptures where it says, do not put the Lord your God to the test. But yet at the same time, I want, to, I want you to ask yourself this. When you accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, weren't we kind of putting him to the test to begin with because now we're going to sit on a promise that we have no idea whether or not he's going to fulfill except by faith. Everyone who accepts Jesus Christ in essence kind of puts the Lord to the test. You see, the king refused to accept an invitation. A straightforward invitation. Ask. And it will be done. And I can even think of times in my life as a young man when an invitation went forth that I didn't respond. I might not have said, I'm not going to put the Lord to the test, but I had reasons for not responding to what God had called me for. Would be calling me out. Calling me to him. Calling me to his son. And yet there are many today, there will be many over this week and next week or whatever and throughout the year who hear the message that God has of his son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit is calling them, and yet they're refusing to respond. They're refusing to accept the offer. And that doesn't, that, that, the only person that rests on is you. God has done everything he can to fulfill that promise. And yet humanity chooses to refuse God's invitation time and time again. While God continues to call, many continue to ignore his voice and follow their own path. And the world we live in today is one just like it's always been, where there'll be those who hear and accept, and there'll be those who hear and reject. But the call still goes forth each and every one of them. It rests upon us as individuals to receive it, to accept it for what it is. The call's there. Are you going to ignore it? His invitation is most evident really during this time of year. I was, as I was preparing the message um, this week and I thought about it, I thought, okay, well, there's two, what I'll refer to as high holy days, Christmas and Easter, Right? Christmas, C and E, Christmas and Easter. And I thought to myself, well, Easter's really, Resurrection Sunday really serves as probably the, the apex of everything that we're looking for. If I, if I drive around town right now, I see a lot more decorations and a lot more celebration for Christmas than I would for Easter. What that kind of tells me here that this is probably the most evident time for someone to come to understand what Jesus Christ is all about. He wasn't a man in a red suit. 
He was the son of God. He came as a baby to die, to live to die for us. And believer and unbeliever alike will decorate, they'll put up their lights and everything else. They may have their reasons for it, but you can't, you can't ignore the fact that the emphasis and the focus of this season is Jesus Christ. Put whatever you want in the front yard. But the celebration is Jesus. We celebrate his birth. He came and he lived and he died for all of us. And so this becomes the, the, a focal point for us. We choose to celebrate his birth. Well, realize this. When you celebrate his birth, you are celebrating his call. His coming for us to make us children of God, to restore us into our relationship with the Father. And it falls upon each and every one of us as individuals to choose to accept or ignore that call. It's not just the babe in the manger. It's a life lived, died, resurrected, ascended. It's not just that moment. We celebrate a moment. A moment that leads to greater things. A moment that leads to restoration in our relationship with the Father. It begins here, but it doesn't end here. This is not the ending, it's the beginning. And while we might choose to reject God's petition, God is not going to stop there. And we see that while Ahaz said, no, I'm not gonna put God to the test, I'm not gonna ask him, God said that I will give you a sign anyway. The Lord gave a sign to Ahaz in spite of the king's response. In verse 14, he said, Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, a virgin will be with child and bear a son, and she will call his name Emmanuel. You see, while the world might choose to reject the birth of Jesus Christ, God gave it to us anyway. Try as hard as you want to ignore the fact. Jesus came for you, for me. This is God's sign. It's a sign of greater things. It's not an end in itself. He gave his son in spite of humanity's refusal. We see that, and we look through the Gospels, we see that in Jesus' life, he was not really widely accepted within culture. One moment, there's one moment in Jesus' life that I can think of where he just kind of became the focal point of praise and worship as he, as he rides into Jerusalem just before his arrest. And everybody lays down their coats, their palm branches, and shouts Hosanna because why? Because they're expecting him to come do something great. And less than a week later, they're hollering, crucify him. Probably the same crowd of people. But that didn't stop God from doing what God wanted to do. What God promised he would do in the scriptures, and what he promised through the prophets he would do. He said, I will send Emmanuel, which Matthew says, means God with us. In essence, what God says is I will send myself to be a presence before you. God's promises are not based on our willingness to accept or reject his son. God is faithful. He keeps his word. He keeps his promises. He made a covenant that he would send a redeemer we see these, this idea of covenants throughout the Old Testament. He established this covenant in Jesus Christ, and it is a covenant which he said, if you accept and receive my son, I will forgive you, without exception. There's nothing I have to do. There are no hoops I have to jump through. There's nothing I have to do to clean my life up because God could have cleaned it for me. But first I must accept his promise. And he, said, he says to each and every one of us, each and every one of you hearing this this morning, he says, in spite of what you choose to accept or reject, I gave you my son. I gave you my promise. You can't ignore it. 
You can put up all any all the lights and decorations and everything. You can celebrate whatever way you want to celebrate, but the, the fact remains, regardless of how, how hard you choose to ignore the truth of this promise, the promise is still there. Because it's his promise. It's eternal. He established his covenant in Christ, and that covenant is embodied in, the, in a baby in a manger. That's where it begins. Christmas is not, it's, it's interesting that we celebrate Christmas at the end of the year because it's not an end game. It's a beginning. Maybe that's why we do that. You know, we'll, we'll, in about a week or so, a couple weeks, we'll be making, I don't make resolutions. Uh, I always make one resolution every year. That's to make no resolutions. Anyway, so, uh, sorry, I've already broken it. So that way, but the point is, as we get into the new year, we think about everything, we reflect on the past year and everything. Maybe that's why we have Christmas at the end of the year, so we can look ahead and say, with Jesus, I'm stepping into something new. New year, new relationship, fulfillment of a promise. God has made a covenant that he will not break. We could be like Ahaz and choose to ignore the request. But he made it anyway. And he's not going to change it. He's not going to change his mind. He's not going to back off on his promise. It's up to us to receive him. So what does all this mean for us? Well, let's take one quick, one more quick look at the messenger, um, messenger's events shared with us in the Gospel of Matthew. I'm going to go back a couple verses. Matthew 1, verse 20 says, But when he considered this, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child who has been conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Now this took place to fulfill what was spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Behold, the virgin will be with child, and shall bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which translated means God with us. This baby in the manger came to save the people of your sins. It's a little infant. It's, it's, just, it's hard to grasp. God's plan begins. It doesn't begin in a palace. It doesn't even begin in, a, in the end. It begins in a manger. It begins in the humblest of locations by just normal people. And yet it comes with a purpose. And that purpose is to save the lost. That's me, that's you, that's all of us. Jesus Christ came for all of us. <coughs> God hasn't asked us to ask him for a sign like he did the king because the sign has already been given. Are you going to accept it? <coughs> God's holy messengers came to deliver the great news of a promised fulfillment of a covenant. One that would find its total fulfillment at the cross. In a few months, we'll be celebrating Resurrection Sunday. That other high holy day. And then, we celebrate the ascension because while Jesus died on the cross and rose again, he also ascended to the Father. And that's where our intercessor now resides. The Holy Spirit draws us to Christ so that he can speak on our behalf with the Father. How do I know I'm forgiven? Because I have this great high priest, king, ruler, prophet, all wrapped up in one person, Jesus Christ. And he will not turn a deaf ear to me or to you. The Old Testament prophets pointed to the future and the coming promise. The Advent story 
is seen as the fulfillment of these prophecies. As God set apart his messengers to deliver the good news in the Old Testament, as the angels had a purpose of delivering the message in the Advent narrative, so also have we been called to serve as God's messengers. The world needs to hear the story of the promise. And he has called each and every one of us to go forth as God's holy messengers to share the promise of Jesus Christ. Are you ready? The year's going to end here in about a week or so. We've got a lot of work to do in the next few days. But don't worry. 2022 is just around the corner. We can keep right on going. But first we need to make sure that we are born again believers in Jesus Christ. I know who I believe in and that's why I share his message. How about you? Father, as we close our time together today, I pray in Jesus' name that you would first of all touch those who do not know Jesus Christ, that hear this word and don't know him as Savior and Lord. That, Lord, you would draw them to you, that you would show them, Father, that the sign has been given, the message fulfilled for each and every one of them. And for those of us who don't know Jesus, or who do know Jesus Christ, those of us who are you called, I pray that you would instill in us through the work of the Holy Spirit the power, the desire to go forth and share this message, your message. Make us your holy messengers. Let us be like the prophets of old. Let us be like the, the angelic hosts rejoicing in the fact that we have a Lord and Savior, one who has uh, forgiven us of our sins, whom we love and have a relationship with so that we can go forth, Lord, and do the same, that others will come to know Jesus as we know him. Let us give this greatest of gifts, not just during this time of year, but I pray, Lord, that it would be a regular part of our daily lives. Go with us and keep your hand upon us and we give you praise and we thank you for all things in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to thank you all for being here this morning. And those of you online, I pray that the Lord is with you. Uh, stay safe. Enjoy your Christmas. Uh, time with family or friends, whatever you're going to do. I pray that you would just have a wonderful time. As always, if you have uh, brought an offering, there's a basket up here. You can put that in and also, if you want to give online, you can do so through the church's website or through our faith life page. And um, this message will go out later today. I challenge you to share it with someone. May the Lord be with you, and God bless you. Have a great week, and Merry Christmas.